Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. For some background before getting into all of the current mess, let me introduce you to Rick, my ex-husband, and my ex-mother-in-law, Rose. I was married to Rick for five years before we separated due to a barrage of reasons. Cheating, lying, manipulation, you name it. Besides, having an absolute shit person for a husband. I also had a very shitty mother-in-law who undeniably enabled her son's behavior and created him into the monster that he was. So we separated and I immediately went no contact with him. I blocked his number and blocked him on all social media. It's been three years since we separated altogether and I haven't been in contact with him or his mother ever since. I've been with my current partner, Adam, for the past year and a half. I fell pregnant with his child after about eight months of us being together. And since things have been working out so well between us, both financially and emotionally, we decided to keep the baby and it's been going good so far, guys. Nine months went by like nothing. And I was taken to the hospital to give birth four days back. It all went well. I had the most supportive people around me, Adam, my sister, and my parents. It was truly a blissful experience for me. And when my baby girl was placed into my arms, all the pain that I ever went through faded away. I was the happiest that I'd ever been. But sadly, the bliss and happiness weren't long lasting because just a couple of hours after giving birth and getting some rest, I felt someone barge into my room. The footsteps were so loud that they immediately caught my attention through the attempts to hush them. If that wasn't enough, my anxiety just increased more when I realized that the hurried footsteps were leading to my room and it didn't take too long till I realized my worst nightmare just came true. It was none other than my ex-mother-in-law at the door. She barged inside and stood right in front of me as if she was just waiting for this moment. I was terrified because there was no one in the room except for the two of us. Adam had gone running some errands and my family and friends had left to give me some rest time. I knew I had to deal with her by myself. So I started by asking her how the frick did she even get here? And her response, I will always find a way to get to my grandchild that you kept me away from for so many years. I'm not ready to forgive you for being such a horrible daughter-in-law, but I will forgive you because you gave birth to my grandchild, one that I've wanted for so long. Her sentences sent shivers down my spine because it felt like I was watching madness unleash in real time. I was speechless, unsure of what to say and to make things worse. Yes, you read it right. Adam walked in around that moment and instead of helping the situation de-escalate, everything just worsened from there onwards. My ex-mother-in-law not letting anyone speak and just screaming her heart out about how I've been keeping her and her son away from the child that belongs to them simply because they cannot afford to give me the expensive life I want to live. Adam stood there stunned. The confidence this woman held in herself was astounding. I immediately decided to call security because that was the best thing I thought I could do for myself at that moment. Needless to say, ex-mother-in-law exited just as dramatically as her entrance, screaming herself outside. There was awkwardness filled in the room later, at least for Adam. As for me, though, I was just clueless. I had so many questions. How the hell did she even get in here? Where did she find out I was pregnant? My mind was clouded with thoughts, but I knew I had to first talk to Adam, who, shockingly, seemed to be more convinced by ex-mother-in-law. I mean, he didn't admit that openly, but the look on his face gave it away that he was having second thoughts. It was heartbreaking because everyone knows, Adam included, that I haven't been in contact with these people since God knows when. Ever since this went down, I decided to move into my parents' place for the time being rather than our shared apartment. I told Adam I needed some good and long rest, and although he seemed to agree and understand, 
I know deep inside he knows just as well as I do that I haven't left because of that reason, but oh well. He made no attempts to stop me or even contact me for that matter of fact, ever since all of that has gone down. I feel completely shattered. It's as if my life is turning upside down completely and there's absolutely nothing that I can do about it. Is there even a way out of this? What the hell do I do here? Any advice would be much appreciated. Update 1. Many of you guys were asking me for an update regarding some more background about my ex-mother-in-law. So, let me start this update off by telling you guys that many of you were indeed right about my mother-in-law and her strange obsession with grandchildren. The obsession mainly stemmed from the fact that my sister-in-law couldn't have children of her own, and mother-in-law just couldn't bear the thought of not having grandkids of her own. So, as a result, as soon as she realized that I had gotten with Rick, she began harassing me to have kids. Needless to say, that never happened because of the dysfunctional relationship between Rick and me. I hope this gives you guys more context about what kind of a person my ex-mother-in-law is. As for the actual update, today I received a call from Adam. He's told me he wants to meet and talk, which I agree to because we indeed have a conversation that needs to happen. Besides that, I also decided to message Rick and my ex-sister-in-law up front to ask them about the situation. There's not much that's happened after that. If anything, I just hope for the best. Update 2. So, I finally met Adam today and it was tough. But it was an eye-opening conversation. Adam came forward and confessed how he definitely became insecure and had his doubts after hearing my ex-mother-in-law speak with so much confidence. He expressed how he felt so lost when I decided to go live with my parents. This leave left him questioning everything, but at the same time gave him time for thinking everything through, realizing just how much of a mistake he was making by not reaching out to me. Finally, he ended his side by apologizing for not being as supportive as he should have been. And what was my answer to that? This might come off as a bit shocking, but I apologized too. I knew exactly where I had gone wrong in this situation, and that was at the point where I decided to leave for my parents' place instead of talking things through. But apologizing doesn't mean that I was ready to accept and return to normal, which I've told Adam that clearly, and he seems to be understanding. I've told him the only way I consider his apology is... If he considers going to couples counselling, which he surprisingly agreed to. As for Rick and my ex-sister-in-law, I received their replies too. Rick, very surprisingly, replied to me in an extremely calm manner. That man truly seemed like he's changed with his new job and new wife. He's explained to me how he's out of contact with his mother. Sister-in-law had something similar to say, but one thing that both of them told me, and boy, did it turn out to be true, was that there was a high chance that mother-in-law found out about my pregnancy through my parents. It was shocking to hear. I wasn't ready to accept it because why would my parents, who saw me cry over Rick, be in touch with my in-laws? I have no idea why, but Rick and sister-in-law hit the bullseye for me. The way my parents flipped out as soon as I confronted them with the information I had found gave it all away to me. We're just trying to do what's best for you, they said, and all I could do was laugh at their faces because today I could see the same madness that I saw in ex-mother-in-law in them. So currently, I've moved in with my sister who's absolutely pissed at my parents. As soon as they realized I wasn't messing with them when I said I was going no contact, they're suddenly going absolute ape shit because they're losing contact with their only grandchild. My sister is child free. But well, before you guys ask, I'm not going to let them have it. Update 3. Today, I celebrated my daughter turning six months with my fiancé, Adam, and thought to myself, what better way to celebrate this day than by posting on this subreddit where I had posted about the mess I had fallen into when my daughter was just mere days old. To give you guys an update about my life, I've moved back in with Adam. 
gone no contact with my parents and filed a restraining order against ex-mother-in-law after she tried to break into my sister's house. Trust me, it was a lot to take in, but thankfully, with the help of Adam, my sister, my friends, and you guys, this journey was much easier. Now, all I hope is for the betterment of my ex-mother-in-law and my parents, hoping that they finally get out of the rut of bringing Rick and me together and being obsessed with having grandchildren so that one day they can enjoy what life truly has to offer. I'm sorry that you had to go through all of this, OP, but don't you think you should have waited a bit longer before deciding to have a child with Adam? I mean, at least that would have given you a sense of judgment towards him, but I guess it's almost better late than never. Adam's reaction was suspicious, OP. Do you think your ex-mother-in-law might have reached out to him before coming to the hospital? I mean, what other way does she have to get the deets about your delivery? Next story. I, 24, female, moved abroad with my boyfriend after graduating from university 18 months ago. One of my best friends from uni, Callum, 24, male, returned to start his PhD and is living in a shared accommodation block. I was visiting my family back home this weekend and had arranged a date to visit Calum and see my old uni town again, and had then planned to go to the airport from there, as it's way nearer than my hometown. Calum had offered me to crash on a blow-up mattress on his floor, and I very happily accepted rather than shell out on a hotel. When I got to Calum's, he had invited his friends in the block to hang out and I met his new girlfriend Hannah for the first time. They'd been together a few months but we hadn't had the chance to meet yet. I liked her loads at first and thought she and Calum were super sweet together. i have known Calum for ages and I'd never see him this happy. When the group started to break up for the evening, she asked me where I was planning on staying for the night. I was surprised that she didn't know and told her what Calum had offered. She then took me outside and asked me to please stay somewhere else that night as she felt uncomfortable with a female friend staying in his room. I didn't really have anywhere else to go, so I said that unless she could help me with a hotel room at this late stage, I couldn't really go anywhere. She then said that I was disrespecting her boundaries with her boyfriend and that in any case, now she was going to stay with Calum and it would be inappropriate for me to be there. She lives in the neighboring block, so I asked her why she couldn't just return there. And she said she had the right to decide which women get to share her boyfriend's room, especially if it's an old female friend who I don't know if she's had a history with him. To be clear, there is no history there at all on either side, and I told her this. But she said she had no way of knowing if I was telling the truth. Again, I refused to leave. We had arranged this ages ago, and she couldn't just undo that last minute unilaterally just because she was his girlfriend. And with that, I went back inside and we said nothing more on it. I stayed the night on the blow-up mattress and left really early this morning. I'm at work now and just got a text from Calum asking if we can call this evening because he just got a text from Hannah saying that I disrespected her boundaries and that he needs to cut me off. He's one of my closest friends and I don't want to lose him, so I'm wondering if I should apologize. My boyfriend thinks this is ridiculous and if anyone needs to apologize, it's her. But at this point, I'm not sure. AITA? Update. Thank you to everyone who commented. I read it all. Quick clarification. The offer was never to share his bed. It was always the blow-up mattress. That's our own boundary. The building has no communal area other than a lobby. I couldn't have slept there. Calum and I called and I did what a lot of you said. One, not apologize. And two, just lay it out exactly as it happened. I even read from my post. The big surprise, he had told her in advance and she had said it was okay. As I commented, I had assumed that they had discussed it on the night, but my later guess was correct. She had said nothing. He then said that when Hannah texted telling him to cut me off, he told her that he wanted to talk to me first about what happened. And then she ghosted him. 
He apologized profusely to me and said that he needed to talk to her ASAP. A girlfriend of Caleb's friend, Sarah, who was there, messaged after we called because she read this post and thought it was me. She told me that she is in a group chat with some others and Hannah, who had been ranting about how I had taken her outside to tell her that even if she was Caleb's new girlfriend, I was his real girl because I was his best girlfriend and that she shouldn't think about coming between us. And that I told her that Caleb might be hers now, but he'll always be my Caleb. Sarah then told me that this has happened twice before, where Hannah has told Caleb that a girl he was friends with needed to be cut off. And she would then tell the group chat, they had said things like, you're no good for him, we'd be better together, etc. Sarah now suspected Hannah was making all this up. So I called Caleb again and told him what Sarah had said. He was very upset. Most of the time, Hannah hadn't really given him a reason to cut off these other girls, just that if he respected her, he'd trust that these girls needed to be cut off because it's girl code. He talked to Hannah in person this morning and she confessed that she made it all up about me and about the other girls. She didn't want other girls to even be an option for him to be close to if they were going to be in a relationship, so she persuaded Caleb into breaking off the friendships, and he didn't want to lose her, so he complied. Her words? I wanted to save you from the opportunity to put another woman above me. He's not had a great experience with previous girlfriends being really emotionally distant, and I think Hannah was the opposite in that she would lavish him with affection when he did things she wanted. Not surprisingly, he broke up with her and has now apologized to the other girls and again to me. NTA. This was prearranged and it's not your fault that he didn't tell her or clear it with her. She could have offered you her apartment if she wanted to stay with her boyfriend and her room was going to be empty. Also, he could have gone to stay with her if she had such an issue. It boils down to the fact that he did not communicate this to her it's not your issue to deal with. Be honest with your friend when he calls. His girlfriend has probably not told him the full story. Next story. My wife is currently eight months pregnant and we are very, very excited. We will be having a boy. My sister Mia just broke up with her now ex-fiancé one month ago. In the past, she has claimed dibs on a certain name for her future kid. Let's say it's Jake. There's not a real significance to the name to her other than she likes it. Anyway, so my wife and I are thinking of boy names and my wife also has always loved Jake as a name for a boy, so much that it's the front runner for her. We have a two yes, one no rule for names, and there's been a lot of potential ones that one of us didn't love, so we had to rule out. Jake is fine to me. It wouldn't have been my first choice, but I do like it, and it's nice to have some alignment between us. I told my mother when she was over at our house, and she said something about how Mia always wanted that name too. I said, yeah, I know, but my wife loves it as well, and we are actually having a kid very soon, where Mia is single and has said she's swearing off dating for a while, which I totally understand after having an engagement fall through. So who knows if she'll even have kids? Also, if there'll even be a boy if she does and that her future partner would also be on board with that name. Well, at some point, my mom tells Mia our plans and she freaks out, accuses me and my wife who liked the name before she met Mia, of stealing her name and all this. I point out that it's just a name and nobody can have rights to it. She then swears she was going to use it and proceeds to call my wife bad things. I then pointed out that she's not pregnant, not dating, and there's no way to know that she'd ever even have the chance to use it, ever, given her situation. She says that I was shaming her for being single and being a name thief. She is still very, very angry. AITA here, or is she being unreasonable? I have no issue with Mia using the same name should she ever have a son and a partner on board with the name. They'd most likely have different last names, and even if not, it wouldn't bother me at all. 
It feels dumb to shoot down a name my wife loves and I like, just because one day my sister may have a boy and end up using it. YTA. I just want to add because what you said was perfect. Those people who steal baby names are just plain out weird. When someone tells you their future plans, you decide that you will take it as your own. I feel like people that are going to say NTA are just men, women, that don't get that it isn't just a name for this person. They picture their life calling their future kid this. And it was taken. Stay tuned for more stories from Our Girl Relationships.